so you actually if you see in the Vedic way of life, the Vedic tradition, there are different uh, times of our life, like transition times, where they say that uh, that if we do it in the proper way, um, it is beneficial for us in the long run. So these are called sanskaras. So this starts with the conception itself. It is said to be 16 main sanskaras in the life of a person and all of these allow one to progress faster or to have a more healthy, more uh, yeah, more healthy and more a life which is uh, taking one to that self-realization. So these are different different times where by removing some obstacles or by putting the right um, intentions, impressions that can benefit us, can be beneficial. So for example, at the time of birth, the parents used to see that, okay, what is the ideal time to conceive a child? That looking at so many factors that, okay, what is the, the best time, like the best season, which is beneficial for the mother also to conceive. Then they look at the phase of the moon, like as we all know, the moon also has an effect on our state of mind and our body even. So the full moon, it is said no, that uh, you see that for example people have a mental imbalance, they become much more imbalanced during the full moon and even other people it has an effect, we have many more dreams or there is more of restlessness in the mind. So they used to look at all these things, okay, what is the ideal type of food? for the mother to eat when she becomes pregnant and during the pregnancy. What are the activities which are to be avoided for her to have a... Uh, to be most comfortable and for the child to have the best conditions to grow in the womb. So like that, they used to see that, okay, how to... what is the best time to conceive, then how to keep the mother state of mind peaceful and happy and have her eat the right things so that during the pregnancy also that affects the child. Like we see people who have a very uh, bad experience during the pregnancy, sometimes the child also has an imbalance. Or if people use certain substances during the pregnancy, even the child is, from the moment it's born, it has an addiction or a, an imbalance in the body. So they used to see and then at the birth and then the type of name which is given to the child the type of food which is fed to the child, all these things they used to look at. That the child can become strong, can be healthy. And one of the sanskaras also was to shave the head. So what they do is they shave the head except for a small part at the little bit top of the back at the back side. There if you see actually there is the, the most sensitive part of the, the skull also. So, and of the, the head, so that part they used to leave it. You know, it's like a little bit of protection. And, but the rest of the hair they used to remove. And there are many ways to explain it. In Ayurveda it is said that it's good because it also develops the, uh, the head and the, the hair growth and it stimulates the different parts of the, the head, the brain also. And also it is said that uh, the child when it is born, the hairs where, which are there, like the child is born, it already has some hair. So this carries some of the impressions from the previous life. So they say, if you remove this, then you know any tendencies, any things which was still there, that is, it's removed. But then before the Upanayana ceremony, usually this is done. The head is shaved and you know, it's like a new beginning. The Upanayana ceremony is considered as a second birth for the person who undergoes it where from that moment onwards when someone takes responsibility before that one is a child so as a child you have no responsibilities you have no rules to follow you can a child will do anything but from the upanayana onwards a child takes certain responsibilities has to follow certain discipline certain rules and because one gets the the sacred thread and becomes eligible to study the vedas it is considered as a second birth, that one is eligible to receive this knowledge, to learn these things. 
So then shaving the head, it's like to mark that, okay, this is like a new step in my life. It's a new birth. And um, of course, many times people also feel that, oh, you know, but I have a nice hairstyle or if you see also in the Buddhist tradition, why people shave the head is because they said that the hair is connected to the self-image or the ego. So to remove the ego, they shave the head. So maybe this also, you can say it's like, a, a, it's like you show that you have made a choice that, okay, what is more important? my outer image or how I look or getting that knowledge, getting this, uh, you know, practices and dedicating myself to that studies, to receiving the knowledge, to my inner growth. So that way also maybe it's like a filter. Those people who are too much attached to their outer appearance, no, no, then I will not look good or what will people say? So then they said, no, no, I don't want to do it. But yeah, a little bit of commitment is there. Yes, I would like to learn these things. I would like to, you know. Even if I have to sacrifice a little things or I have to, you know, even if it can be a little uncomfortable, still I am ready to go through it. To receive this knowledge, to go deeper and learn more about myself. So like that you can take it in different ways.